come to a Marc Jacobs show expecting the unexpected. So when you get something that's maybe a little bit predictable and conservative in its own paradoxical way, it seems really radical. All to do with like classicism and all that kind of thing. Most of the girls are wearing hats, so you're just going to get the ponytail coming out the back of the hat. Much to their chagrin, we're bleaching the girls' eyebrows and then sketching in a finer brow. It's pretty monochrome. You know, we're just inspired to be here. It's always good. So I don't know what his theme is. I don't know anything about what he's going to put on the runway, but whatever it is, I'm sure it's going to be dope. That's Mark. Mark's always dope. I was feeling a little film noir Edward Hopper thing. There is a solitude of Hopper. This was just a very interior sort of world where you know, people's feet don't touch the floor and you're sort of lonely at the end of the night and everyone goes home and you're still beautiful and you've spent all day taking care of yourself. <laughs> all that great stuff. I don't know why, but I just found myself watching like sort of weird Fassbender and Bertolucci's The Conformist and one of my favorites, La Dernière Anne and Marion Bad. I just think that he's the most innovative designer there is in a lot of ways. I have the pleasure of being very good friends with him, so even though I know what he's thinking about creatively, it's always a surprise. Sometimes with Mark, you know, there's designers that evolve, and I think he's more of a revolver. Revolution, not evolution. I'm just looking at the facade and just in my head, my sort of cynical references to the sort of fashion industry, which isn't biting the hand that feeds me or anything, but just thinking about like what all this is. You know, it's a retro look with an edge and a twist. But I think there were elements you always see in Mark's collections, like he loves to play with fabric treatments, like details and folds. Because we look at the clothes so closely, I can see his hand in it. The bags were great, great knits that you sometimes don't see on the runway. It's interesting he would feel that at this particular moment in history, his friends want to dress as conservatively as that. Well, I think that the presentation was conservative to make a point, you know, and to have to create this mood. But I think that taken individually, I think some of the articles are definitely very radical. This collection is probably of all the ones that I participate in, the most personal reflection of what I am going through in my own life. I am a lonely guy, and there you go. This collection probably had less edge on the runway, but we'll edge it up. Its lack of edge might be its edge, which is the weird twist. Well, it depends on how you wear the clothes. There was a fetishistic edge. Yes, and if you apply that, then it gets really interesting. This was the choice I made, which was to go for the sort of boredom of classicism. And again, without any nostalgia for it, but just like, Almost to sort of say like, oh yeah, no, you all know I can do that. It's so fast, Bender, it's sick. <laughs> I know. I think the way he presents it, it, it's, it really fetishizes clothing in a really provocative way. Thank goodness. <laughs>